willing to go, and he's willing to go really, really close. The bomb was of two feet from where Shai and I were starting, and Mike kept backing us up closer and closer to where the bomb was. It's terrifying, really, to be standing next to a trash can that's full of 100 gallons of gasoline, knowing that there's a trigger attached to it. You're literally standing next to it like this, like, hi, death, because if somebody, if something goes wrong and, and somebody triggers it at the wrong moment, you're dead, for sure. There's no coming back from that. You're f Like, you're f Your movie's done. I don't have a face anymore. We're, we're finished. Frazier, is this the biggest explosion we've had on the show so far in Biggest, both of them? biggest, Shai. This is all for you. Bigger than anything we did in the first. Oh, yeah. And we're looking for all of our special effects guys, and we're like, where, where are they? Because usually they're close by, monitoring everything, making sure it's going OK. And they were like six football fields away, huddled together in a group with like umbrellas and things to shield themselves from whatever might fall from the sky after it, it went off. But we're standing right next to it. Blew up the whole world, it felt like. You could feel like the hairs on the back of your neck sizzle. It's like you could smell that hair burn. It was really crazy. He's never comfortable until he's uh, left uh, death and destruction in his path. <laughs> In Michael Bay fashion, as he'd say a lot of times, I think I'm done. I think I've blown up everything I can blow up. There's nothing left. <laughs> There's a lot of fire, a lot of ash. That was a tough location to shoot in, hard to breathe in there. Um, you don't have any easy locations with Mike, especially in your, your grand, you know, battle strategy. I mean, if it's the big battle, it's the big battle. You know that coming to work. Uh, those weren't easy days to be on this film at all. It's well known that Michael's challenging to work with. For many reasons, he's an absolute perfectionist. He, he has a very specific idea of what he likes. At times, has been known to be, you know, not quite as flexible as one would like. He is very demanding and very challenging. And I think that's because he's, he's so acute and clear about what he wants and He'll, he'll push and push until he gets results. And I think that is a real quality in that it elevates the performance and the work of everyone. He doesn't like people to operate in their comfort zone. He has a particular way of unbalancing people and it's for a particular reason. There's a, a certain energy and result he can get from people really across the board, cast and crew included, that happens when they're a little off killed her and he'll he'll go out of his way to uh, to achieve <laughs> jock make it more interesting your first frame it's pretty boring dude pretty boring your first frame jock jock your first frame pan over more to the, the, the guys pan over teeny bit pan more over here pan more a little more jock pan more over here it's not that interesting no i want to see through the hole offset it michael matthew's asking which way they offset the image it is a crazy way of making a film, but it's kind of kind of addictive as well. You're right on the edge the whole time. I think he has a theory that if he leaves people to work in their comfort zone, that he's not going to get the best out of them. If, if he's got people standing around thinking, yeah, I know, I've done this a hundred times before, you know, they're not going to give it their all. Hey, guys, I said 15 seconds, not 30. Casey, could you quiet that whole laughing stuff over there, back there? I know they're having a great time. Guys, I'm shooting. Don't f bother my mojo. I think he's a little bit misunderstood. He is tough. He is demanding, and he's very detail-oriented. But whatever you want to say about him, the guy's talented. He's a brilliant, uh, in my opinion, a brilliant filmmaker. And uh, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. And, 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 and a lot of the times, he doesn't, you know, he may scream at somebody, but two minutes later, he's laughing with them. I've worked with some wild directors and much, much more uh, 
you know, I'm sure he'll be depressed about this, but uh, much, much more intimidating than him and really violent. Everybody says he's hard to work with and he's this and that, you know, and he's hard to deal with. I didn't find that. I found a person who's extremely dedicated, who, who's extremely specific, and, and, and who's dealing with the weight of the world. That's not easy for a man, so. Um, I'm understanding of Mike. Like, I understand him more, and he's become more humorous to me than scary. You know, he, he used to be this barking dog who's really terrifying, you know, really. And then, and then after a while, that loses its, its vigor, and it just becomes like sort of a, he becomes like a, a clown almost, like a character. Seriously, and I think he realizes it, that it's a character. And he likes playing that General Patton role. He's an actor himself, and it's his onset persona. Because if you ever catch Mike anywhere else, like, like uh, at the mall, petting little dogs, or at the children's hospital, passing out lollipops, or making hammocks for homeless people out of him. Mike does a lot of things nobody knows about. Look, he is a supremely talented person. Visually, he, he sees things like no one I've ever, I've ever worked with. Um, he creates things that were not there, that are magnificent to watch or be a part of, and God bless him, uh, he's doing well for himself. I think he's gonna make it. I think he's gonna be a star one day.